You've heard the expression that dogs are man's best friend, but there is mounting evidence that other animals, cats, horses, and dolphins, to name a few, that also provide physical and emotional benefits that go far beyond companionship. Known as animal-assisted therapy, some animals are used to help diagnose illness. Others protect people from complications, from medical conditions like epilepsy and seizures. Then, there are some who help patients cope with emotional and psychological trauma. As Full Frame contributor Sandra Hughes found out, we're just beginning to discover the extraordinary benefits of the human-animal connection. Whoa! Wow! Oh, God! Bye! Every weekend, Mary McGinnis brings her 13-year-old son, Michael, for horseback riding lessons just outside Los Angeles, California. Whoa, good. Moments after Michael McGinnis walks into the arena, you can tell he's a special kid. What's the letter on there? J! Good. Pro? Uh. Really good, Michael. He was diagnosed with autism around his second birthday. He has very low muscle tone. Uh, he has difficulty making eye contact. He is not responsive to questions. Um, it just sort of lost him. We sort of lost him. Red light! The game I play, red light, green light, the stopping and going, they have to use their core and they have to connect their core so they get stronger in their core. Good, Paulina, look at you. While it's hard to lasso any statistics proving animal-assisted therapy works, the parents of the special needs kids who ride here don't care about numbers, they count the smiles. For Michael McGinnis, it's meant the confidence to ride a skateboard and swim in the ocean. It's made a big difference for him. He's calmer, he's, he just seems more regulated. He um, doesn't have meltdowns as easily. In 1982, the American Veterinary Medical Association recognized hippotherapy, or horseback riding, as a legitimate treatment for a wide range of disorders. Up and two point, Linnea, up and two point. Keep the distance between your horses. At its core, animal-assisted therapy is making a connection between the horse and its rider. Horses are empathetic. So well, each right? time that they come to the session, they're, it's a clean slate, even if they've worked with that client before. And they mirror the emotion of the client. A handful of studies show promising results. In the U.S., a recent study of 34 autistic children found that being exposed to therapeutic horseback riding resulted in elevated sensory skills, social motivation, and a decrease in attention deficit, distractibility, and sedentary behaviors. Animal-assisted therapy can be adapted for varying disabilities and issues in children and adults using animals from one ton to one pound. Animal assisted therapy with birds saved veteran Matthew Simmons. The Serenity program at the Los Angeles Veterans Administration was what this soldier needed to combat his post traumatic stress disorder. Now he runs the program, which has expanded. We rescue parrots, wolves, and or coyotes, and foxes, uh, but more importantly, we rescue veterans and we give them a chance at uh, reintroduction and family reunification. Tango. Simmons claims his parrots and wolves have a higher rate of success than Alcoholics Anonymous. These ones are fun. Lillian Love knows why. She was diagnosed with PTSD after a career in the Coast Guard as a search and rescue team member. Need some more birds. I actually lived uh, in a van for a while. She struggled to get her life back on track. Trouble with relationships. I isolated. I uh, drank heavily, never stayed in one spot too long. 
needs to go. There's that human animal bond. And a lot of times that's the catalyst to recovery. Tango, where you at, buddy? Retired from the Navy, Bob Carell lost everything in the recession and ended up homeless. He and Tango struck up a friendship right away. These guys, uh, they calm me down. He likes to sit in my lap, too. Still a fairly new therapy, people have known for centuries that connecting with an animal can make you feel better. Yeah, Silly. you're a good boy. But watching these rescued birds give wing to heal addictions and the scars of war, or seeing a horse carry the burden of a child's disability is enough to make anyone believe. For Full Frame, this is Sandra Hughes in Los Angeles. Dr. Christine Forrest is a Los Angeles-based psychiatrist. She's seen firsthand how effective animal-assisted therapy is. With her is her trained therapy dog, River, happiest animal on the planet right now. <laughs> Dr. Forrest will tell you patients have benefited from River's participation in her practice in profound and remarkable ways. We'll get to that in just a bit. Dr. Amber Anderson is the medical director and owner of Redondo Veterinary Medical Center. She's also joining us. She's seen countless examples of how the human-animal bond enriches health and heart, both among common house pets and some surprising exotic animals as well. We want to welcome all of you to Full Frame. Thanks so much for coming in. Um, Christine, why don't I start with you? So, so you're in practice for 12 years, but River's only been with you for two. What made you say, you know what, I'm going to bring this dog into the office and see what happens. When I was in training, my residency training at County USC, one of my mentors had a Labrador and uh, she brought him to her office. Her, she was working a lot with children at that time. And that was 20 years ago when working with dogs was not considered cool. It was <laughs> She was doing revolutionary <laughs> stuff. And, and she kind of paved the way and, and made me very curious about that. And she was having amazing stories about how children and uh, the parents were reacting to the dog and how pacifying everything was when the dog was in a room. Um, so ever since I had this idea in mind, but it wasn't possible for us to get a dog until two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I thought like everybody else, okay, the dog is going to come and it's going to be nice and people are going to be relaxed. And I had the usual concerns like allergies and health concerns and how clean he has to be. But I had no idea the impact that actually he has on the therapy itself. And that's what animal assisted therapy by definition is when the animal is not only present, but it's engaged in a therapeutic process in psychotherapy session itself. And I, at first I realized that when the dog was there, they were more open, they would bring up more intimate concerns than before. It was like a barrier was shattered and we're all together trying to find the best way possible for them to get well. Um, and I'm sure, Amber, when you hear stories like uh, Christine's, not unusual. It, it, it's not unusual, is it? It's not. And, you know, I find that the human-animal bond is really a unique and sacred bond. And, you know, we've relied on animals since the beginning of time for transportation and food and clothing. And now we're really beginning to find the significant benefits that they have on the emotional, the psychological, and the physical health of people. And you look at the two of you, and this dog's got to be the happiest animal <laughs> on the planet. Or we better. are. Yeah, or, and you, well, that's the and point, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah. And that, and that, is that what you saw initially, was just that suddenly people there... They're starting to relax a little bit more, and they're more open. They're petting the dog. Uh, is yeah, that is that the initial that's stage? That's what happened. But well, at, in the beginning, one of our first cases was this new patient with post-traumatic stress disorder. She was a young lady. Horrible things have happened to her, and she was so traumatized that every time I would ask her a question about the trauma, because that's how we process uh, something bad that happened to us by talking and bring it from the subconscious into the conscious field of awareness. Um, she couldn't talk about the trauma. I, River was positioned in her lap and every question I would answer, the answers would go straight to River. And mm. River understood that he was there for a purpose and, and for the whole hour would not move. He knew he had a job. So that impressed me. How did he know that? 
how did and how come this this person so traumatized was comfortable talking to him how come the barriers between judgment and shame and and uh, emotional pain were not there so amber what's the answer uh, you know, there's been numerous research articles that have studied this in depth and been published about it. Um, and I'm not sure that we really have the answer figured out yet. I think it's an area that we definitely need more exploration. So whether it's increased endorphins or oxytocin um, or decreased cortisol levels, there's some scientific explanation that we're still discovering, I think, behind it. But it has been proven to help numerous health conditions, um, lowering blood pressure and improving pain management and also in the the mental health field with you know depression and anxiety and, and things like that. So. But but do they, does this have an impact on the animals themselves? I mean, uh, it, it seems like I, I know. And the reason I ask that is I have friends of mine who are therapists, and and sure. they go to counseling sessions sure. to kind of because you're bringing in all this stuff. Absolutely. If you're in a session and everyone's kind of dumping on you, even if you're a dog, mm -hmm. it can be pretty heavy, can it? It can be at times. I mean, I think that many animals, they just like the companionship of people regardless of what it is. They love the attention and they love the engagement. But, you know, we do need to make sure that these animals that are being utilized for animal-assisted therapy have downtime, okay, that they have stress relief, that they have uh, the ability to go and play and, you know, get, get kind of outdoors and, and make sure that their self and well-being is okay too. You know, we're talking a lot about River, because uh, River's the star of the show, I mean, <laughs> what a great dog, but, but uh, what I find interesting about this, and maybe you can talk a little bit about it, it you can see dogs, but I've seen cases where uh, animals you wouldn't even think of are used in therapy. I mean, give us the, the range. What are you seeing? We've had some really special and unique animals used in therapy. So in South Africa, they're currently using elephants for children who are blind, and they help with the tactile sensation with it, and then the children sometimes are encouraged to go up, do other things out in their life. And in places like Israel and Australia, they're using dolphin-assisted therapy, and the children actually get in the water with the animal, and they're finding that it improves motor skills for for, um, people suffering with you know cerebral palsy or things like that so and then uh, finally a really unique one they were doing in London with group therapy for people with eating disorders um, and addiction problems and they had used a snake in the group therapy session wow. so the snake decided to slither around and visit everyone and some people relate better to the scaly snake than they do to the fuzzy cute animal so there's really an animal for any type of person yeah I would not volunteer for that one. No. <laughs> River I can handle. Um, does River act different with different patients? Because di different patients bring in different, present yes. differently. So does River, is it a sixth sense, do you think? I mean, what is it? What do you see? It's intuition. He, animals relate to us at intuitive level. We have, um, I'm sure you're familiar with the neurobiology of emotions mm -hmm. and how a, lot, a big part of our brain, all the way from brainstem to um, right uh, hemisphere, it, we're conditioned to uh, respond, perceive, and, and transmit emotions. And those are the parts of the brains every mammal has. And at that level, intuitive, emotional level, he connects with people so quickly. And we're all conditioned to respond the same way because we have it in us. Uh, way too often uh, in patients, there's a disconnect between cognitive mind like logic, thinking, planning, and emotions. And a lot of the time the work in psychotherapy shuttles between thinking and uh, uh, emotions. So River is a vehicle, it's all, almost like a catalyst to bring that emotional side in. Everybody, the patient, me and him, react to that emotional level. And that's why the exchanges in, uh, in what we do, exchanges of ideas, uh, deciphering Key key elements of things that people have been dealing with for a very long time and didn't know how to fix it They reveal themselves. Okay, so at this stage though River looks almost comatose mm -hmm. uh, Can you get <laughs> River to do something with me? Can River come over and do River. something? River, hey. River. Come from up, time. <laughs> River, come here
<laughs> well, see, there you have it. Uh, I, I, I am beyond help. I need probably several therapy but sessions. You did make us all laugh. <laughs> you did something funny and it made us all laugh. River, what is you it? Am I chopped liver? Come on. No, oh, River, River's like, <laughs> uh, I've already had my close-up. time up. for you to get up. All right. Okay. Can you at least, you can at least let me pet you, right? Come on over here. You can come call here. him by name. River, come here. Come up here. Come up here, River. Come up here. All right, come up here. Says come that on. you have a nice come suit on. on. There, there you go. So I have a new friend. Oh, thank you. See, I, I had to at least get River up to do something. Uh -huh. See, this River's been relaxing. Look, at all he does is, I want to go back over there. There's more petting on that side. River, well, shake. <clears throat> oh, let's see this. Can you shake? Shake. Yay! All right. High five. High five. Can you give me a high five? <laughs> All right. A little low, but that's okay. It'll pass. Thank you both for coming in. River, thank you. Thank you for having us. Been a us. star, as expected. Coming up on Full Frame, this week's close-up on a rather unique artist whose love for painting not only saved his own life, but has helped dozens of his peers as well. River.